Hi friends. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I usually keep my cool in most situations, even when talking to some of the worst scammers. I hate what they do, but there's this part of me that says, okay, they live in a third world country. Maybe it's much, much worse than I can ever imagine. But when it comes to people in the U.S. who do have enough money taking advantage of the poor, such as bad landlords that I've had, that is the kind of thing that makes me lose it. And I get especially angry if I'm pregnant. kind of wish I had started my channel when I was pregnant because that would have been high entertainment. Anyway, if you're about to become a renter for the first time, please read up on your landlord-tenant laws so you know them front and back. And also, on moving day, when they want that damage sheet for you to fill out, make sure you go around and take pictures of everything, or even video. Test the blinds to see if they work, because they will nickel and dime you for everything. And once you hand in that damage sheet, if you find out something has broken, you're kind of out of luck. And what drives me nuts is that they charge cleaning fees, and they charge people for damages, but they don't actually fix those damages. And so when the next person moves in, they better document those damages so they don't get charged for it. So check out everything with the refrigerator, the oven, everything. It's a long story, but the first apartment my husband and I rented was in Texas. And the landlords were okay. They never charged us for anything when we were moving out. But when we were in the bathroom, there was this disgusting smell that seemed to be coming from underneath the building. And there were a bunch of cats living underneath it. Or maybe it's a scammer. Hello? Win for you. This is an urgent message from the campaign to help elect President Trump in 2020. Every single day. I want it to be a scammer. Also, we lived in Tornado Alley, and there was no tornado shelter, and the night there was a warning, I was awake all night just listening to the windows rattle, and that was terrifying. We also discovered, after a rather long period of time, that the blinds only worked one way. I don't know what you call those, but we couldn't see anyone outside, but apparently other people could see in, um, especially at night. Then I realized why this one guy was always standing out there. Uh, then when my husband was stationed in Washington, we rented our first apartment by ourselves, which was a dream come true because there was a lot of weirdness in the situation in Texas. <laughs> and one of the rules was that whatever we rented, they had to have a military clause, which meant if the military is sending us somewhere else, they had to let us out of our lease. So I asked the manager how much the deposit was, and she said, oh, we don't charge a deposit for military. And she made it sound like that was a big favor to us. But when we moved out and there were no damages, they charged us over $100 for things like broken blinds. And we had hardly touched the blinds while we lived there. They claimed they were bent, and they were not bent. I didn't have any proof that the blinds weren't broken. So also take video and pictures when you move out of a place too. Also, when we moved into that place, I found cat poop in the closet. So if people are paying a cleaning fee, what is that cleaning fee for? How did the people cleaning not notice cat poop in the closet? And there was also this large area in the dining room where it was obvious a cat had peed over and over again. It smelled horrible, and they had some carpet cleaners come over, but it didn't help because the pee had obviously soaked into the pad, and probably the subfloor even. And when the manager came over and looked at it, she said, where? Where's the cat being? Like, right there. And she continued to act like she couldn't notice it. I'm like, um, get down there and smell it. If we're going to pay half our income to live somewhere, it better not have any sort of poop or pee in it. I don't think that's too much to ask. So we moved out of that place and then into a place that was closer to base while we had a waiting list to live on base. And this place had a military clause, but it didn't include breaking the lease to move on base. That was really disappointing because the apartment downstairs from us was pretty much cursed. And that's a whole other story too. So I talked to the manager about it and she said there was no way to get us out of our lease. But then she said, oh, you know what? She said, you could just not pay your rent and then they'll give you a three-day notice to pay or vacate. 
And she really did seem to think that she was helping us. And then I said, okay, we can do that. But then she said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I just realized you still have to pay what you owed. I think we had a month left of our lease. And I actually really liked the apartment itself. It was just in a bad area. But the people below us, there was domestic violence going on. And then they moved out. And then another couple moved in. And there was more domestic violence. So then we moved on base. And everything was good. Because we didn't have to pay rent there. And we didn't have to pay electric bills or anything. But they're not receiving basic allowance for quarters anymore. So your paycheck gets smaller too. Then when my husband got out, we decided to move a couple hours away and be close to some relatives. And that was a really difficult transition, but he saved up a month of leave so that he could still count that as income as we were looking for a place because no one wants to rent to you if you don't actually have a job. And then that way he'd have that whole month to job search up in that area. And we basically had to start like all over. What the recruiter got him to do was pretty much useless on the outside because it pays minimum wage. The last time we had paid rent, it had been about 5.35, and then moving to this area, we couldn't find anything cheaper than 7.50. And so when we went up to look at these apartments, they gave us a tour of their model apartment, and they basically lied and said that that's what our apartment would be like. So then we came back a different day to sign the lease, and I asked, can we take a look at the apartment we're actually moving into? And she said, oh no, you can't because the carpets are drying. Okay, don't ever fall for that. That was a huge mistake on our part. And we should have insisted that we put on some foot coverings or something like that. Don't move into a place you haven't actually seen. We didn't really have any other options, so we signed the lease. And when we got there on moving day with all of our staff and with our six-month-old son, so pregnant me will go off on people. Just had a baby me? <laughs> I have no fight in me when I've just had a baby. When we got inside our apartment, it turned out the bedroom was so small, it couldn't actually fit any furniture in there besides our bed. We needed to have a dresser in our room. And I sat down on the floor with Jared and nursed him and was just speechless. I just sat there like this. And usually I'm the fighter, but my husband went down to the office and said, this is unacceptable. We were told this is what we were getting and this place is way too small. And the lady said, oh, oh okay, we have this place over in the A building and it's really roomy. That would have been a great solution, but then they charged us $30 more for it. And maybe $30 doesn't sound like a lot, but to us that was a huge amount because we were already barely going to be able to afford $750. But they had also told us that they charged for water sewer garbage, and I said, okay, about how much is that? Oh, it's only about $20 a month. That was a lie, too. They were charging us $60 a month, and they said it was based on the whole building and dividing it up based on how many people lived in your apartment. And they also said that they charged per pound for garbage. And the city said, we don't weigh the garbage. They had no idea where they were getting that story from. So it was just me, my husband, and our baby. We didn't use very much water at all. And our friends who lived down the street and had a house and a daycare, they were only paying $50 a month for water sewer garbage. And what I learned as I continued living there is that they did the same thing to everyone who moved in. Lied about what kind of apartment they were getting, and if people weren't happy, they would say, oh, okay, we'll give you free covered parking for six months. But what I also learned was that some apartments were claimed as vacant, but they were actually cramming in tons of uh, unregistered guests, is what the reporter later called it. Yeah, I got a reporter involved. And so when it came to the water sewer garbage, we were paying for people who weren't even documented as paying rent. Meanwhile, we weren't supposed to wash our cars in the parking lot, but the maintenance guy started running a car wash from our building. And of course, that was running up our water bill. One month when we got the invoice, they were trying to bill us $80 for water sewer garbage. And that is when I really started to lose it with them. I called the management and got voicemail 
and I ranted to them. I don't like paying for other people's water sewer garbage, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I was letting them know, I know what you guys are doing. And it was a huge complex, so they could get away with having a few vacant apartments here and there. And when there were noise complaints about the 10 people living in one apartment, they would just move them to a different vacant apartment. And I don't care if people want to live cramped in an apartment, but when that starts to cost other people money, that's not okay. It got to the point where I didn't trust them at all. And the first time they raised our rent, it wasn't too bad. They raised it $10. And then the next time our lease was running up, they sent a letter saying that our rent was still going to be $7.90. And I was really surprised by that. I thought they were going to keep increasing our rent, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep this letter in a very safe place. And I know lots of times when people have a safe place, it's not really a safe place, but I seriously picked a spot on this counter that we never use, and it was just for that letter proving that our rent wasn't going up. And by then, I was pregnant. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. When we went to the office to sign our new lease, they put it in front of me and it said 810 on it instead of 790. And I said, why does this say 810? And the lady said, well, that's what the letter said that we sent you. And then she opened this drawer and pulled out a fake letter, trying to claim that that's the letter they sent to us. And yeah, the letter said that our rent was going up to 810. And I said, I'll be right back. I was absolutely fuming. I stormed back to our apartment. I grabbed that letter. And when I got back, and when I got back, I practically threw that letter at her. I slammed it down on the desk and said, 790. Like they weren't expecting that I was still gonna have that letter. And if I didn't have that letter, we would have had a $20 rent increase. Then she said, oh, I guess I'll have to change the lease then. And I said, yeah, you will. And then I said something like, what kind of crap are you people trying to pull? That was the last straw for me. So as soon as I got back to our apartment, I emailed a local reporter and she wrote back in less than five minutes and said, I have been dying to do a story on this place, but I haven't been able to find anyone willing to go on record. I said, oh yeah. You can use my name. You can use my photo too, for all I care. Because they were screwing over poor people left and right. And this is where it gets really crazy. People on Hello? Hi. Oh. Well, we're also out of milk. Again. At the last minute, the editor decided not to use my name because he was afraid for my life due to a conspiracy involving a local church, police. <laughs> this is just unreal. It's apparently involved police, people on the city council, and the manager had been pocketing cash from people who weren't registered tenants. So she could have been charging those people $800 a month and she was just putting the cash in her pocket. And that's what the reporter found out from someone who used to work there. But they weren't willing to go on record. And when I talked to other tenants about the situation, and that was before I knew about uh, all of that stuff, they were terrified. They said, you didn't give the reporter our name, did you? Like, so many people complained about what they were doing to people, but they were too afraid to do anything about it. But the reason why landlords get away with stuff like this is because people are too afraid. It was really hard living there the rest of the lease, but when the story came out in the paper, I had a little giggle about Tenant X. The manager did not like the attention. Our next apartment started off pretty great, but when they changed management, we started to have some issues. And then corporate brought in someone horrible. We chose that place because they didn't have leases. They were just month to month and we wanted to be able to buy a house without worrying about breaking the lease. We did have some issues with the maintenance guy. He was kind of a jerk and he tried to say that we weren't allowed to have an air conditioner in our window. 
and there was nothing in the rules that said we couldn't have one, so I just ignored him. Years later, leases became optional there, and then they changed some other things and added a fee if you decided not to have a lease. Then came the day when they said they were going to start charging for water sewer garbage, which they hadn't done the whole 10 plus years we'd lived there. We lived in that apartment for 12 years, which still just blows my mind. And the letter said they were doing it to help guard against rent increases. And there was a second letter for us that said our rent was going up. Oh, you're trying to guard us against rent increases as you raise our rent. How nice of you. So we had a rent increase and we were paying another $90 a month for water sewer garbage. They had calculated out what they thought was the fair amount for our family. And then they had this company that was billing us after the month was up. And that worked for a few months. But then they sent us another letter saying that that company was no longer going to be billing us, but they were going to bill us themselves, only they were going to charge us in advance for the water sewer garbage. So here we got this letter on June 5th saying, as of June 1st, we are now charging for water sewer garbage. That pay period, we were paying for May's utilities, and they were telling us that we had to pay June's utilities with our July rent, and also July's utilities with our July rent. And they gave us negative five days notice of this change, and that is a change in lease terms. And because I'd had such crappy landlord experiences, I knew the Landlord-Tenant Act very, very well. Once again, I was pregnant and the hellfires were burning within. Oh, and they added that they could not accept our rent payment if it didn't have the entire amount. So I went to a free legal clinic and the lawyers there aren't allowed to represent you, but they can give you advice on what to do next. And so when I brought all the information to this lawyer, she looked it over and she goes, are these new landlords? I said, no. And then she says, are they stupid? And I said, yes. And then she said, this is a change in lease terms with no notice. I said, yes, negative notice even. If you're month to month, they have to give you 30 days notice of a change in lease terms. And if you're in the middle of a lease, they can't do that. At the time we could afford to pay it all at once, but we had a bunch of elderly neighbors who were on fixed incomes and it just was not fair that they were gonna do that to them. And really what they could have done was decided, okay, we're gonna do this change in the billing. We're gonna eat the cost for one month because after all, we didn't charge you guys for water sewer garbage until just recently after 10 years plus of not charging water sewer garbage. And what was hilarious was the prosecuting attorney for our city lived in our apartments. So when this lawyer said you can either pay it and take them to small claims to get the money back and then some, or you can go around the complex with a letter asserting your rights and get everyone to sign it, I decided, oh, I'm definitely going to go around the complex, which was a ton of work. But I knew the prosecuting attorney would sign it, which he did. He was an awesome guy. I hardly had to say a word before he took the paper and said, uh-huh, yeah, let me sign that. And other people were either scared or said, can you come back when it has more signatures on it? Because they were worried about retaliation. And I had people ask me, aren't you afraid they're going to see you doing that and kick you out? And they could have kicked us out because we were still month to month. And all you have to do is give 30 days notice and say, move out. They don't even have to have a reason. In fact, they had kicked out some friends because the neighbors downstairs didn't like the noise their kids were making. And they weren't over the occupancy limit or anything. They had a baby and a toddler. And the manager never should have put them above someone like that. And when the people complained about the noise, she should have just said, that's apartment living. This was a retired couple that was there all day long. And so with us having four kids at this point, and we were over the occupancy limit, but on the bottom floor, that just made me more scared that we were going to get kicked out. And this is what really irritated me. One of our neighbors said, well, I can afford it, so it doesn't really affect me. 
And I said, it affects your neighbors. And he just didn't care. Like, what is this attitude that as long as it doesn't affect me personally, it doesn't matter? Because someday he is going to be elderly. And I think he would like people to stand up for him, right? I got probably a third of the complex to sign it. And I knew our manager was going out of town and this wasn't her fault, this was corporate's fault. And whenever they had letters for us, someone would personally post them on every single person's door. And so I decided I'm gonna send this right after the manager goes on vacation because I wanted the corporate lady to have to work her bum off. I also scanned the letter and I made a new email account just to send it to corporate. Just days later, we had a letter on our door saying they unintentionally characterized that amount as rent and asked if we could please try to pay the full amount if we could. And I know they were scared. <laughs> I so enjoyed watching them backpedal. It was beautiful. Our actual manager, she was really nice and I was glad that she was gone for that. Maybe sometime I'll tell you about the time I yelled screw you at net zero. Yes, I was pregnant at the time. If we all band together, we can fight bad landlords and other bad businesses. And yes, I know there are bad tenants too. Once again, that's a whole other story. Why did the Incredible Hulk always lose his shirt but not his pants? I mean, I'm happy he didn't lose his pants. Do you think he ever turned into the Hulk just because he was mad he ruined another outfit? Like, how much was his budget for clothing? Um, if I were him, shut up, crow. If I were him, I would have given up and worn nothing but spandex or maybe a muumuu. I just threw my allergy bill over and over again. I should probably go pay it. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications so you know when I have a new upload. What makes you angry? Let me know in the comments. How you doing?